Welcome to The Quirks of German X, where I take a look at the German ports of games and how they differ to the originals, like censorship, voice acting and other quirky changes. Well, sort of. Because this video is about Duke Nukem 3D, which doesn't really have a German version. Instead, the game was, like many others around the same time, like Wolfenstein and Doom, simply put on the index so it couldn't be sold or advertised. However, the game has so many ports that got censored in so many interesting ways that it would be a crime not to talk about them. Therefore, I'm bending the rules of my series just a bit only for this video to talk about the Australian DOS version and the ports of the N64 and the Japanese PlayStation. As always, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like and a comment and do consider supporting me directly on Patreon to see new videos one week earlier than everybody else. I'd also like to thank Schnittberichte, The Cutting Room Floor and the Duke Nukem Wiki for a lot of the information on these changes. Before we dive into the older ports, I'd like to quickly address the latest release of Duke 3D, namely the 20th Anniversary World Tour Edition. This is also the version played for this video, so you're going to see these same changes there. Much like in the BFG edition of Doom, the red crosses on the medkits are pills here since the symbol is a protected one. Check out my Quirks of German Doom video for more information on that. They even updated some unused sprites, that's how extra safe they wanted to be. I think it works much better here than in Doom since it already often says first aid next to it and there already are pill bottles. So I doubt that anyone would think that these are anything but health items. Thanks to the white parts of the pills, it also helps them stand out against the darker backgrounds. Yeah, dark red on dark grey isn't exactly the best choice for visibility. For copyright or legal reasons, credit card logos were also somewhat altered, which applies to any mentions of real world businesses as well, even though most of them don't even appear in game. It's slightly unfortunate that these things had to get changed, but they don't really detract from the experience in any shape or form, so it doesn't really matter. But now that we've taken a look at the latest release of the game, let's not dilly dally any further and take a look at the earliest one of them all. Now, for this one, I'm kind of stretching the definition of both Australian and port as it's not really a port and it's also not exclusive to Australia. They didn't make any unique assets for it and neither did they really do anything original either. In actuality, all they did was simply disable the mature content option for Australian players and prevented them from being able to switch it back on. Wanna play Australian Duke? Go into the main menu, click this button, there you go. So, just for the sake of completion, let's go quickly over the changes. Enemies still have blood and gore on their sprites, they just don't bleed otherwise. When shooting them, they simply emit smoke as if you're shooting a wall, while bosses also drop metal bits, just nothing else. And logically, any bloody puddles, splats on walls and footprints are also gone. You can't jib anyone by exploding or stepping on them either, as they just disappear instantly. At least they don't slowly fade away here like they do in Half-Life. There's also a lot less decorative gore, which especially applies to the human body parts and raw meat. The cutscenes that play after defeating a boss are missing as well, since they depict Duke brutally finishing them off. The sexual content was hit even worse, however. Not only have all the porn movie screens simply been turned off, but any and all loot magazines and posters are missing as well, as if an angry, conservative mother went through her son's bedroom. Inconsistently, calendars still depict women in bikinis on them, which I'm assuming they just forgot about. But on top of that, any and all women are nowhere to be seen either. Not even just the half-naked ones, all of them. They really weren't willing to take any chances, huh? And at the end of the game, you can hear the moaning of Duke and a woman in the uncut version, but not here. What's silly about all of this is the fact that strip clubs and porn movie theaters still exist as settings, they're now just almost completely empty inside. And that kind of proves how lazy this type of censorship really is. It's the tried and tested method of removing any offending imagery instead of giving it sensible replacements. And even then, they barely committed to it. At least when they took out the blood in Half-Life, they really took out all of the blood. To be fair, unlike in that game, you can at least tell when you're hitting enemies, so the censorship doesn't detract from the gameplay. But that's the absolute lowest possible bar to pass, and I won't give them any credit for it. So, we're off to a flying start in this video, aren't we? As you can tell, some censored ports were treated better than others, and this is definitely one of the others. But it's not the only one, and so we shall move right along to take a look at a version of the game from the land of the rising sun. The place 
PlayStation 1 port of Duke Nukem is unique in its own right, having received new graphics, audio, enemies, levels, and even the subtitle Total Meltdown. The Japanese version, however, got changed even further, though not in terribly positive ways. Unlike the Australian port of the DOS original, the blood and gore in this port remains completely untouched, with the bleeding and the jibbing and the- Decorative gore, on the other hand, was radically altered, though incredibly inconsistently. The hanging monk from Rise of the Triad and that guy from Doom and Death Row aren't present, which also applies to Indiana Jones' corpse. Luke Skywalker's body in Lunar Reactor isn't just gone, but was even replaced with a completely unique spread of a slab of meat. It's obvious that while violence against alien creatures was deemed acceptable, the same couldn't be said for violence against humans. It makes sense, or at least it would, was the censorship not completely inconsistent in that regard? The human body parts in the sushi bar of raw meat were also taken out, but for some reason, the more generic parts frying on the grill like eyeballs and ribcages question mark are still there. And while they removed the possessed head from the exclusive episode 4, they also left in a decapitated duke head and a cut off ear. So did they just forget about these, did they just not want to bother, or did no one even find them? In any case, the whole affair seems pretty pointless. Either go all the way or go home, I say. Go home in this case. Less inconsistent are the changes to the sexual references in the game. The movie playing in the adult theater in the first level is now a Lynchian thriller in which Duke tries to escape from the horrors of his past. Or so I think, because you try to explain what the hell is going on here. We could also look at the movie's title for reference, which was changed from the classic Master Pete. Pete. <laughs> Ah, uh, the classic Master Pete. <coughs> we could also take a look at the movie's title for reference, which was changed from the classic masterpiece Attack of the Bleach Blonde Biker Bimbos to... Triumph of the Duke? Like the P-Baby propaganda movie Triumph of the Will? Boy, I guess they took the name Hollywood Holocaust a bit too literally. Other partners were instead replaced with messages warning the population that Earth is under attack. I find it hilarious that, for some reason, even the private movie screens of a sleazy adult bookstore are wired to display emergency messages. Anywho, most porno movie and pin -up posters were instead replaced with movie parodies. I say most because they were again quite inconsistent about it, as certain posters and calendars with bikini clad women were allowed to stay and the same goes for all the nude magazines. That isn't even mentioning the fact that the strip clubs in the game are still very much strip clubs, with massive banners advertising their exotic dancers. On the other hand, much like an Australian Duke, every single babe has been removed, even the fully clothed regular women. The only exception to this is the geisha from Raw Mead, but she's an incredibly confusing character. In the original, you can press use on her, which makes her show you her breasts. But if you decide to attack her, she shatters into a million pieces. So was she even human to begin with, or a porcelain figure? How else could she have stripped for you? I really hope it was just a programming error and not a fetishistic Asian women as delicate as glass type deal. I know the game already objectified women, but you don't have to literally turn them into objects. Some other changes are to the Mastercard and Visa logos on the cash registers, which were likely done more for legal reasons and are so silly that I think they loop around back to being hilarious. More importantly, however, all of Duke's voice lines that have swears in them had them poorly edited out, which frankly sounds terrible. Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. Those aliens are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. I'm Duke Nukem, and I'm coming to get the rest of you alien bastards. I'm Duke Nukem, and I'm coming to get the rest of you aliens. Damn, that's the second time those alien bastards shot up my ride. That's the second time those aliens shot up my ride. They put a bit more effort into one of them, but even then, it's not much. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. It's time to bash butt and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Though, I will admit, one of them is so lazily made that it becomes hysterical. It's like something you'd hear in a YouTube parody. Your face, your ass, what's the difference? Your face, your face, what's the difference? But in conclusion, woof, what an awful port. It was slightly more interesting than Australian Dude, but not by a whole lot. What bothers me the most is not just how lazy the censorship is, but how inconsistent it is as well, where I feel they might as well not even have bothered. It really goes to show how ridiculous the whole concept of this type of censorship is in the first place. They barely ever put any effort into it, but despite that, it still gets accepted, making you wonder what the whole point was. 
The only good part about this whole thing is the voice line simply because of how horrendous they are. But even then, you can just mod them into regular Duke if you like them so much. Pass. But were all console ports of Duke Nukem 3D doomed to suffer the same fate of mediocrity? Or did the N64 one stand a much better chance? Let's find out. Now that you've seen two examples of genuinely boring censorship, I'm willing to bet that you don't have high hopes for part of the game to a system made by a company that is infamous for heavily censoring their games. After all, a cool and mature game like Duke on a kid's console? Harumph! However, I am asking you to keep an open mind because… well, you'll see. A quick forward yet again. Duke Nukem 64 was not made for the German market, but much like Wolfenstein 3D for the Super Nintendo, it was available over here. And similar to that game, I won't be discussing all of the changes done to it, just the ones in the name of censorship. I will say though, it was really hard to compare the two versions, because some levels like Rabbit Transit were changed so drastically that putting them side by side just wasn't possible. I also played the fan-made PC port instead of emulating the N64 original, which is the exact same game except it looks, runs and plays a million times better. I even disabled texture filtering because it blurs everything together and frankly, we're here to actually see the differences. First of all, all blood and gore during combat is intact, much like in the Japanese PS1 port. Enemy death sprites are unchanged, they still bleed while getting shot, they chip when getting exploded or expanded, you can even step on them, yada yada yada. In fact, combat is even more violent than on DOS as you can even chip corpses by shooting them, which you couldn't originally. A very rare case of a censored game being even more gory, that's quite impressive. Unlike the PS1 version, decorative corpses and gore weren't removed. At times, they were slightly altered, like changing the mangled Luke Skywalker corpse into an unscathed Yoda one instead. Some of the… Uh, less tasteful content, to say it nicely, was taken out however, which I'm honestly happy about. The level LA Rumble has an abortion clinic in the DOS version that seems to have been run by Frankenstein, because gore and fetuses and jars are just lying everywhere. This is thankfully all gone at the 64 port. A very interesting change was also made to the secret Duke Burger level. Originally, you could find a dog kennel by the quote, Society for the Preparation of Cane and Hamburger in it. The name and the fact that it has a back room with a bloody operating table in it that connects straight to the titular burger place makes it quite clear what is really being done to those poor dogs. This was most likely too crass for censors, which is more than understandable. Even in the original game, disabling mature content also hides the dog sitting in one of the kennels, so this must have been quite a contentious part of the game from the start. So, what did they do in the N64 version instead? Well, they replaced the building with the missing individuals bureau, and the dog kennels are now freezers filled with human corpses. Very metal indeed. Oh yes, they knew what they were doing, making this yet another case of censorship that's more horrific than the uncut version. Cutscenes were also altered with completely new renders of Duke heroically… standing there. Yeah, no execution of the bosses or anything, instead it skips right to the next part explaining the story. I'm not sure why they took these out. It does seem cruel to show Duke Nukem shooting the boss as he's already down on the ground, but you can literally do that in the game. In this version in particular. And the final cutscene of Duke kicking the Cyclone Emperor's eye through those football forks is also still here. For the Overlord cutscene, it was probably removed because going to the toilet on someone's neck was a bit too crass for censors yet again, since he doesn't even mention it before the battle either, and the same goes for any references to alcohol or nudity, but more on that in a bit. It's also possible they wanted to focus more on telling the story, since that was previously just told via text blurbs. I find it interesting that Duke's line, nobody steals a chicks that lives, was taken out as well, because now he just… quietly stares at a screen showing a captured woman. It makes him seem far more somber than he's reflecting on all the horrors that these innocent people are going through. And for a guy that watches Oprah, that's really not out of character. In fact, it's even more in line with modern reinterpretations of him that turn him into much more of a feminist himbo than a roided up douchebag. Duke loves babes after all. And on the topic of that, all of the sexual content has, unsurprisingly, been taken out. Yeah, it's Nintendo, but did you really expect? However, and you're not going to believe me when I say this, this is actually my favorite part of the port. Because they didn't just remove all the nude posters and porno movies, they instead changed them to movie parodies. What an absolutely genius idea. 
Duke Nukem was already a parody of action movie heroes, which means they're just leaning into that aspect of his character even more here. What's even better, they managed to keep some of the original game's humor by doing so. In the first level, the movie screen originally depicts a striptease tease and you blow a hole into the woman's crotch. In the N64 version, however, the movie is instead a scene from Independence Day, in which an alien ship blows up the White House, which you can then do yourself. And this commitment to the bit carries over to the other parts that got censored. You probably already know that the other bookstore at the second level was turned into a gun store. It's a pretty neat commentary in America's gun culture, and even works well in the context of Duke Nukem because he embodies the ideal American hero. Which, of course, translates to lots of firepower. The porno mags and nude posters are now also gun related, showing an almost fetishistic side of this culture with titles like Big Gun Magazine or Is Your Weapon Big Enough? What's even better, however, is the fact that the private booths in the back of the store that were previously for watching pornos are still there. They now just show action movies instead, where half naked women wave their pistols around. And yes, the implication is intended, as the tissue holders are also still there. I mean, the level was even renamed to Gun Crazy, which makes the whole thing even more obvious. The strip club nearby is now also Duke Burger, which takes its sprites and textures from the secret level I mentioned previously. The bar has been changed to a kitchen. And the extra strip club itself is now the loading dock for the burger place. And even here, they went all out, as the restaurant is really neatly designed, with enemies sitting at tables as if they're waiting for their order. And much like the gun store, it's yet another commentary on American stereotypes, this time about how much they love burgers. Maybe not as extreme as the previous example, but still very cool. What's also cool is how the exotic dance show in Raw Meat was changed. Once again, they could have simply turned it into a generic club or just removed all the posters, but they didn't. Instead, they turned it into a show by the good old boys, a parody of the Blues Brothers. They even changed up the whole room itself and added the two musicians. So what was previously a standard ooh pretty lady place now houses another cute reference that's in line with the game itself. The geisha at the start is now also distinctly a statue, as she doesn't react to you at all anymore and still shatters into a million pieces, which really caught me off guard the first time I saw it. Oh! Oh no! Ah, this is glass! Oh! Other changes to the sexual content are a bit less interesting. The KTIT radio station is now the KNAW one, and the line by Duke about the breast tunes in town was also taken out. Any pinup calendars now also regular ones, something none of the other ports we've seen so far bothered doing. I did find it funny how the Ellie Cat Neon sign kept its name, but instead replaced the dancing woman with an actual kitty cat. Now that's just cute. And despite all these changes, they even added some crude jokes of their own, like giving the balls of steel pinball machine a pair of actual balls of steel being fondled by a female hand. On the other hand, hey, every single woman you meet in the game is now fully clothed, making them less eye candy, though they still are, and more just regular civilians. You also can't pay them to shake it, madam, anymore either. The only exception to this is this one in the abyss, which I guess the by censors because she's hidden in a secret. But even more importantly, you can actually save the captured babes now. Apparently, there even exists some sprites that show the alien tentacles getting removed, but those never appear in game. But this is an incredibly important change. In the original, they were clearly past the point of saving and just begged you to kill them, which was honestly just way too dark. While you can't kill them at all anymore here, you can, however, destroy the alien pods that were stuck on previously, which still explode into eyeballs, spines, and organs. Doesn't make sense, but it fits the cheesy action movie vibe. Being able to do this is also important, as there's sometimes items hidden behind them. But to make things even better, saving them isn't just a visual change, the game actually keeps track of how many babes you've saved, counting towards your completion. That by itself is pretty cool, since it gives the player more reasons to explore the levels and hunt for secrets. But on top of that, they even added more babes to levels, some of which are actually pretty well hidden, like requiring you to jump down a large pit without dying. This is miles better than the babes just being decoration. It also fits Duke's character way more, as I previously talked about. Remember how in Duke Nukem Forever, it felt really out of place how unbothered he was by the twins being turned into alien breeding slaves? Of course it did, because Duke loves babes. That was the reason he went to space after all to save Earth's women. 
So of course it makes sense for saving them actually being an integral part of the game. However, not all babes can be rescued. Ones that can physically be reached or couldn't logically be alive because they're underwater are simply brutalized. Gonna be honest, this is a terrible change. Not only is it needlessly cruel again, but also confusing. So you can save all babes except some babes? And there's even certain ones that frankly shouldn't be alive either, but they are. At least you can't even shoot these dead ones, so I suppose any and all violence against humans was a no-go, alive or not. In other news, references to drugs and other illegal substances were also changed. Alcohol bottles, for instance, are now just soda. It might seem lame, but I'd argue it's really not. Duke Nukem 3D is a parody of America itself, and Coca-Cola is pretty damn American. The only missed opportunity is having them come out of vending machines when you shoot them like in Half-Life. Not necessary, but would have been cool. It's still funny how the game can't have alcohol, but having decapitated heads and torn off body parts next to them is A-OK. -okay. Heck, even the wine racks are still there. Well, maybe it's grape juice. The bar sign in raw meat was also changed to one that says cafe. It doesn't exactly fit, but I suppose restaurant was too long. Steroids have also been turned into Vitamin X, a name that's so painfully generic that it sounds like something straight out of a 90s cartoon. They should have instead leaned into the nuclear angle of Duke Nukem and called it something like Atomic Energy or Atomic Rush. I mean, they already have Atomic Health. And finally, as is tradition with Nintendo games, all references to religion have been wiped away as well. This only applies to the church part of Death Row, which was changed into yet more prison cells. This means that the easter egg with that doom dude and the monk was instead turned into a special cell with Hannibal Lecter inside. Fun fact, I was obsessed with Hannibal Lecter when I was younger, and that part is actually the reason why I bought the game in the first place after I saw it online. Also, Doom Man isn't entirely gone, he was instead moved to LA Rumble. And that's most of the notable changes. There's some other ones, of course. For some reason, they felt the need to update the graffiti, even though none of it was really offensive. However, they also included a reference to Shadow Warrior, which is pretty adorable. And unlike the Japanese PS1 port, this one keeps all of the curse words in the game. Gotcha now, and we're gonna fry your ass. What I find kind of weird, however, is the fact that the first level is still called Hollywood Holocaust, which surely would tick off at least German censors. Anyway, I really have to say that I'm actually a massive fan of the censorship in this game. Unlike the other two ports, they weren't lazy about it in the slightest, really going above and beyond to do something different that still fits the game's themes. Unless the studio might have just removed all the offending imagery, like the other ones did, but they truly wanted to create something unique here. What I find absolutely remarkable is the fact that they looked at the original and what made it special and then made sure not to ruin it too much. So sure, there's no nudity anymore, but now Americans are lusting after guns and burgers. Even the easter eggs, which are one of the most iconic parts of Duke Nukem 3D, got great replacements just so N64 players wouldn't miss out on anything. And in some cases, the censored aspects make the game better, especially the ability to save babes. And I'm not the only person to feel this way since other Duke games also allow you to rescue them. And I have to say, I really don't miss the sexual part since I feel those have aged the worst. I'm not a purist by any means, but there's a time for getting horny, and there's a time for shooting monsters. And telling a girl to take a top off two rooms away from mutilated women begging for death doesn't really get me going in any way. It just absolutely kills the vibe and distracts from what you're actually here for, which is the shooting. And the shooting is still the exact same as before, as all the blood and gore is there, so you're not missing anything. So, together with the new weapons and the altered levels, it's a cool way of replaying the game like New Caribbean. Seriously, if you're in any way interested in the port, then give it a go. I've enjoyed my time with it way more than I did with the original, especially because of the grenade launcher. Go play the PC port I mentioned earlier, link is below. Overall, I'd say that Duke Nukem 64 goes in the upper right corner of the scale of German ports, even if it's not a German port. The effort was extremely commendable and the changes were incredibly enjoyable. In no way did I think that this was a lesser experience than the DOS original, I can only recommend playing it. The PS1 port however, yeah, it had very low effort put into it with some really lazy changes and even moving a lot of aspects of the game, so it was also really not enjoyable. 
The Australian port was even worse since they didn't even try at all. Just removing stuff without replacing it with anything is the lowest form of censorship. There's not even a reason to play it out of curiosity. And the anniversary edition… I really don't care. It can stay in the middle. And those were the censored ports of Duke Nukem 3D. I'd love to hear what you thought about them, especially the 64 one. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of it, then please show me that with a like and a comment. You can also support me further by subscribing and even by donating directly to my Patreon. Anything is appreciated. But for now, thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day and goodbye.